Eclectic Method. Out to remix video. Okay, this tutorial is going to be about making riffs, otherwise known as fucking about. Some people might go into tunes knowing exactly what they're going to do. They know the melody and how the song is going to go before they start. But most people uh, that make stuff do it by messing around and trying out a lot of things. And this is basically how I make every remix. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to show you. The main reason I use Vegas is because you can edit in beats and bars instead of frames and seconds. And that becomes incredibly useful when you're trying to make things musical. But also you can loop bits and it will do a preview that's um, using the RAM to show you what's going on. So the image will gradually get better the more you loop it. But let me, let me give you an example. So if I was, uh, I've got a track here. 128 BPM. You hit here on ruler in the project properties and this is where you can type in your BPM. And then when you go to the timeline, instead of having it set to time and frames like most video editors, I've got it set to measures and beats. So it's now telling you the uh, timeline as beats at 128 BPM. So what I'm going to do here is make, this is a one bar loop that I'm looping. And I've also got a backing track that's just a kick drum. Okay, so let's see. I've got the sample of Chuck D here. And first, I'm going to click quantize the frames so everything's locking into frames to show you how it would be if I couldn't edit outside of frames. You see there, it's jumping every frame of the timeline. And the thing is, you can't get very musical once you start doing that because you're locked into these measures of frames. And your ear can pick out a lot more density in time. So if I switch frames off here, you see these very slight changes between the frames with the audio do make a difference to the sound. Now what Vegas is doing here is, is ignoring the frames in seconds. So later on, when you come to render it as like 29 frames, whatever you're doing, it will choose either or. And uh, for that reason, it doesn't really matter at this point. You might get some issues with slight flash frames here and there. Um, but those are easily fixed. But this, for me, makes it a lot easier to think about video in a musical way. Uh, so, I mean, I'll just show you really quickly making a riff. Uh, so I've just got a little bit of Chuck D here. I'm, I'm just going to cut up the major bits super quick. And then start copying pasting them. To measures that I see, but literally no thought about it, just messing about. You see what it's doing here is I haven't rendered the video out, it's just playing a lower resolution preview. And as it's looping, I'm never stopping it, so it's all musical for me. I'm copy pasting and editing this video so I can make riffs as I'm on the go. I very quickly made a riff there. Okay, the other major reason I got into Vegas over other video editing software was the ease with time stretching. So I've got a timeline here and I know it's at 128 BPM. I know that this is a bar of 128. So if I had an acapella or some video musical riff that was at a different tempo. I can take a clip, cut a bar of it so I know it's precise, and then you hold down control and you grab the end of the clip and it will time stretch it to make it faster or slower until it's at the right tempo that you're working at. So. Make him a lot faster. Slower. And you see, it's time stretching the audio. So here in the properties, I'll always go here, hit Pro, do preserve formats. But you can mess around with this to get different kinds of sounds. Usually, I just do that. To, to me, it sounds like the best time stretch. But turn the formats up to do that. Or if you want to mess around, you can link the uh, stretch to the pitch so it pitches it as the same rate. This can be fun to get more 
turntable like sounds. Sounds hectic. Sounds hectic. Because when you scratch a turntable, you do it faster, it goes higher in pitch. So you can do stuff like take this and I'll do it fast like it was a quick spin back and then you highlight both parts of the clip, right click and do reverse. You see that quickly made an audio file. The way I approach making most of my remixes is I just make a lot of ideas that I will basically end up checking away and sometimes I'll try out a few different tempos. What I usually start with is a beat at a certain tempo so I decide that I'm going to work at a certain tempo. For this project I decided I was going to work at 92 BPM. And so when I first started I just had a click that did this at 92 BPM and then I put this click for like 10 minutes you know, 45 minutes of this click just going on and I had nothing in this timeline to begin with and then I copy paste from the folder I cut from so one of the great things with Vegas is if you right click here when a copy of Vegas is already open you can open the second copy of Vegas and then you can jump between the two copies copy stuff back and forth so for this I will have a project that's just called Cuts. So this is where I've chosen all the samples I want to use and in the last tutorial I spoke a bit about sorting those when they contain dialogue and other things but this one is purely sound effects. I've just got all these tracks and all I've done is I've gone highlighted them all at once and just done Control C or copy and then gone to my project where I'm making riffs and pasted them in. And then from there, I've copy pasted them throughout this project. And uh, I just make a huge timeline ahead. And I've got markers in where I've made things where I think things have worked. And even after I've sorted them in a project, like i just shown you, when I come here, sometimes I'll sort them again. Like these are things I felt sounded like a kick snare. These are kind of some like high passy gun click stuff here. I'll show you through some of the riffs I made. And a lot of this stuff I don't use. I'm just messing around. And at this stage when I'm making stuff, there's loads of black frames and space here and it doesn't look good because I'm not even thinking about the video. I've already chosen the clips because the clips look good. So I'll worry about how they look later. To begin with, I just want to make some cool sounding riffs. So all this stuff is stuff I made but didn't end up using. And so making riffs is really endless and um, a lot of people making music that's all they're doing in the studio is making a lot of stuff they don't end up using and there's loads of different ways to make riffs and I feel this crosses over with other tutorials that people do and like how to use Ableton or Logic or any of that software to make music you can get into sound effects and a lot of what I do is when I do use sound effects in a project, I'll often bounce the sound straight down and save the project as. So I'd save this as SFX Jam 02, 03, 04 and keep copies of where I've used effects. So I can always go back and change it if I don't like it. But to avoid having hundreds of effects going, but also using hundreds of effects to make nice sounds, I'll um, export the sound. So in, in Vegas, that's really simple. Like I'd, ha I'd really like this bar of music. And I'll just hit Control M to export. And I make sure it's a perfect loop there. Export, and then I go and export it as audio. And then once you've exported it as audio, you'll get an uh, audio loop. Okay, one simple technique I'll sometimes use is I'll take a rhythmical pattern like this, and I'll put markers where every hit of a rhythm happens. So I'll, I'll copy this video riff to these markers and you see it really quickly latches to it. And then pretty quickly Okay, what I'm doing here is, 
there's another thing about making video rhythms is first I've made a riff that I like and so it's all focused on how the audio file sounds and looks and then at this point onwards when you start making the project and you want to make it better uh, you have to fill all the black spaces so a lot of the times when you watch a punch for example the punch always starts from when the fist has already hit the face and that doesn't look very good what actually makes the punch look and sound good in your mind is watching the fist go towards the face All right, it's probably a bit of a violent clip I've chosen but I doubt there's any kids interested in this so yeah it's the bit before that that makes the sound work so it's all like this it's not as effective yeah so you'll have to fix this by dragging the video files what I did there is this block button links the files the audio and video files together so when you click it the audio and video files are no longer linked so I can do whatever I want with the video file stretch it out but the audio file won't stretch so I'll get a clean punch sound here and a bit of video before it okay this next step is not really necessary and it's and if you want to spend a bit of money I bought Vegasaur which also has a ton of tools for editing which makes things a lot quicker like for example you could take a bunch of actions a bunch of clips paste them like you're gonna make a riff highlight these clips and tell Vegasaur to randomize the events this way you can quickly generate totally new riffs out of your video samples randomize again okay so now let's say I've spent a few days messing around on stuff and I've got riffs that I like and I feel I'm gonna make a good track so this is what I start making my tracks so I've got a blank template here I'm gonna set the BPM in the ruler to be the same as the 92 BPM tune I've been working on and what I'll literally do at this point is just go to where all my riffs are and start making choices about what goes first okay so I copy all that stuff go to my new project and paste it and this is where I'll start building the song so that's a two bar loop I'm just going to loop that so that's four loops of that. Now I'll create a new channel here. And I'm going to take something else and start building a song with it. Yeah, take that. Copy that. Come back to the project where I'm building the song. and very quickly building a song and this is where you start making decisions where you want full screen or maybe you want to see two things on screen at the same time and all that's very easy um, I'll probably rush through this and there's other things I use and do if you have any questions write it in the comments feel free to email me and thanks for watching